If you listened really closely or at least read really closely on the title, you'll notice I didn't say stop making sewing mistakes, full stop. I said stop making mistakes on your project because mistakes are inevitable. It is part of the learning process. We're doing this for the first time. We're going to make sewing mistakes. That's not the issue. We just don't want to be making those mistakes on our garment. We don't want the first time to be on our expensive fabric, right? So the key is really testing. And I've got four ways for you to implement this into your sewing routine so you can start making less mistakes on your precious, beautiful me made garments. Okay, so think about this, my sewing friends. If say one of your other sewing friends, friends was uh, learning something for the first time. So even if you're cooking, for example, and they've never touched a stove oven before, etc. right? Like no experience whatsoever. And they're going in and you know, you're teaching them or watching them and you know, they're going in trying to crack the eggs and trying to scoop it around. And they use the wrong utensil, like, okay, the wrong temperature, the different type of pan than they should have and it burns they didn't add salt or pepper and you know it's a bit of a scrambled egg disaster but you know what you're like you did really well right you don't expect them to be able to make a wedding cake when they've never cooked baked anything ever before right not if you that if you're looking at that from somebody else like a friend of yours right but yet we expect that the very first time we do something sewing ourselves, it should be perfect with zero mistakes, right? I know, why do we do this to ourselves? If it's, it's quite amusing, I always think the um, difference if we thought about the way that we speak to ourselves and how about our own, so making mistakes and things in particular, put that to somebody else. You would never talk the way that you do to yourself in your head to somebody else for sure. And so when we apply this to our sewing, of course, we don't want to be making uh, the mistakes. Well, for one thing, let's just clear off if we didn't already capture that. Mistakes happen. It is part of the learning process. And if it's something that you can't handle, maybe sewing or learning anything is maybe not for you because it will happen. That's, that's the whole point of like doing this. You're doing it for the first time. You're never going to get it perfect. There is no perfect. You keep growing and growing those skills. And so it's not about not making mistakes. It's just about not making those mistakes on your precious fabric, your garment, that then you can't um, undo or you know, make any changes to and ruin that expensive fabric, basically, <laughs> because you probably have used every last centimeter cutting it out in the first place and there's no extra fabric to cut another piece from. Yeah, we've all been there. We've all been there. So I've got four ways for you to uh, apply. Basically, we want to test all the things, practice all the things, uh, do all that do all that, that stuff, get all the mistakes done before we put it on our garment. And I've got four ways for you to do this, to implement into your sewing routine and you can get better and better results because you, you, your garment's going to be wonderful. No mistakes, right? The first one is to do a toile or a mock-up, um, a muslin for uh, fit. So <laughs> you can test out the size rather than cutting out blindly, willy-nilly, even if you've measured and everything, it's never quite the same. There's a difference of size and fit, you know, just getting the right size, but then there's still little tweaks in there for the fit is doing this um, mock-up phase, so a toile, a muslin, all the same thing, a little practice piece. Now I've made some other videos on what that is. If you're unsure, it is a practice garment and don't worry, it's not an entirely whole garment. Now it can be, but generally you want to make just kind of like Think about it as the outside shell. So when you just sew all the seams together, et cetera, and you put this like shell of a garment together so you can actually see what it's going to be like and decide, is it the right size? Do you need to make changes, et cetera? Because very often, sometimes you can get away with making little changes when you've already made the actual garment, but quite often you can't because they're just not the kind of changes you can make to something that's already pre-made. And so, to avoid all of that, starting to do the, you know, the twirls, the mock-ups to help you with that fitting process and getting the right size is really, really uh, key. Now you don't need to do seam finishes and I recommend old secondhand cotton, 100% cotton bed sheets for this. Um, you can get them for a couple of dollars, you get so much fabric and they're like just really, really great for this process. 
That way the sizing, the fitting mistakes are minimized and on your real garment. And the next one is testing your stitches. I know I we're all guilty of just rushing in and just sewing on the machine, right? Or you just put the new thread in on your bobbin and you just go and oops, um, different fabrics will require different stitches, maybe a different needle, make sure that it's all working properly and it's the right stitch length and it looks good. And very often I know, you know, buttonholes or something and you just didn't really test it first before you did it on your real one because you don't want your real garment, your, 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 your actual garment to be the one that has all of the like, oops, oops, changing the dial here and there. And it's got all the messy knots and all the um, hoo-ha that might be going on. Like we don't want that on our actual garment. Test all your stitches, get scraps of the fabric that you'll be using, test your stitches, test them, and just make sure that they're going to work. And then of course it's testing the seam finishes after your stitches. This is a really, really big one that we, um, overlook I think way too much particularly when we obviously first start sewing so testing out those seam finishes is the seam finish one appropriate for the fabric and garment that you're making you know maybe that overlock um, stitch isn't really good maybe a Hong Kong binding is better for that garment maybe it's fraying so much that that's just not going to work do you need an open seam a closed seam due to the fabric or in the style where it is on the garment it might require some other different seam finish and again and as we're learning this, we all know the first time you use your overlocker or anything, it's always wonky and it's everywhere. Or even if you're hand felling it, it's like, ugh. so you get used to handling the fabric and the type of finish that you're going to do on machine hand and seam finish on like little test sample pieces before you go to your real garment. So you don't have like one seam that's done one way and the other is done another because you've realized halfway through that you should have sewn it a little bit differently or use different settings. You know what I mean, right? So testing those seam finishes before you get to your real garment will save you so many bad, poor mistakes on your actual garment. Get those done before you get to your real one. And then it is practicing sewing techniques and you can practice this on your toile or mock-up that you've already made, right? So this is where it doubles in purpose in doing the toile the mock-up stage is that you can also use it to practice these sewing techniques. Maybe you've never sewn facings before. Maybe you've never sewn buttonholes. Maybe you want a different type of hemming technique, even just the seams and seam finishes or sewing in armholes, practice a zip. That's a big one. Use your mock-up as a practice, as even if you're learning a zip, for example, for the very first time, you absolutely do not want that to be on your actual garment, the very first one you do. I don't think mine even was functional when I did my first zip. So you want to do on first a practice one to just learn the process of example, that sewing technique, it might be a zip, learn what you actually have to do, change the feet, etc. And then I would also then recommend, depending on the sewing technique and the difficulty in your skill level, practicing that same thing in the fabric that you're going to use as well, because it will perform differently. Maybe it's slippery fabric, etc., And so extra steps might need to be taken. That's how you basically, by the third time you do it, you're guaranteed almost to make a wonderful, perfect zip, or at least one very, very, you know, acceptable to wear in public zip at the third time. When imagine if that very first one you did was on your garment and you would probably look at it and think, Nope, I cannot wear that garment in public. <laughs> That's what we're trying to avoid. So doing all of that. And so just to remember that that toile, that mock up, think of it as part of the process to make a really great garment. It's not like making two unnecessarily. It's for practice. It's for design. It's for fit. It's for ease so that you can buy nicer fabrics and feel more confident when you're going to your real garment, so to say, that you've tested all of these things. It just takes the stress, the pressure out and testing all these things because that's how you make less sewing mistakes on your garment is by doing all of these testing things beforehand. Now the big question, are you a tester already? Let me know in the comments below or have you actually never tested anything before but are thinking, Wow, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I'd love to hear um, your biggest takeaways down below and or what you like to test the most as well that you get the most value out of. Because remember, read those comments because there'll be quite a lot of great juicy information down there for you too. So that is it for me, I think for this one. So make sure you leave your comment and check the description box because there are a lot of other videos that I've made that relate to all these different things that can really help you along in your sewing journey that I know will be great. Um, benefit after this one. So until next time, my sewing friends, happy sewing. Bye.